minute. Got seven o'clock. I hope everybody can hear me. Welcome. I see Kat telling me yes. This is Debbie Rawlinson, the Vice Chair of Membership for the Sam Houston Area Council. We are really glad you're on this Zoom call with us tonight. So welcome to all the leaders in all the districts of our council and as well as a few visitors from other councils that we believe are joining us tonight. We are expecting over 400 people on this call tonight. Wow, that's exciting. So a few Zoom housekeeping notes for everybody as we get started. Make sure that you are in speaker view on your Zoom call. And if you're not familiar with that, in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it'll switch between gallery view and speaker view. If you see the words gallery view, you're in speaker view. <laughs> I know that's kind of confusing, but you're gonna wanna see some screens that Chris Hogue's gonna share in a little while. So you need to be in speaker view. Second thing, be sure you stay muted throughout this presentation. Uh, that way the speaker will be the one that you see up in front so be sure to keep yourself muted our chat room is going to be open Dustin Dupuy is going to man that and we're going to say hi to him in just a minute I have a favor to ask as part of our housekeeping tonight please limit your questions in the chat to Cub Scout recruiting we, we picked up a lot of questions last week that didn't have anything to do with Cub Scout recruiting and we're just not gonna have time to answer those. So if you would save those for your DE or another time and we're gonna focus on Cub Scout recruiting tonight. So let's get started. I wanna introduce tonight's training team. There are three of us down here at the Sam Houston Area Council office. We are like the only people in the building. <laughs> it's, that is really weird. And, uh, but we wanted to come here so we had a really good network connection and besides and we're so social distance, like you can't even, we can't even holler at each other. You have to text if you want to talk to the other person. It's kind of crazy. Um, so I'm going to do, my overview tonight is going to be about our, our 2020 recruiting plan, uh, some key steps to success, and then an overview of some of our brand new resources that I think you're going to be really excited about. We are obviously in a very different environment than we're used to for fall recruiting. And things are changing almost daily with our school districts. We had school districts making new announcements just this week and it's only Wednesday. So it's still a great time to be involved in scouting. And we are not gonna wait for the whole world to settle down. We're gonna work on inviting new families into Cub Scouting right now. There's a lot of new coming your way tonight, which is fun, but I wanna encourage everybody to take notes. Just like we would tell you at any other scouting training event or Wood Badge, take some notes but i do want to tell you take take a big breath you don't need to write down everything we say because there is a great online resource that chris is going to show you during his section that is the 2020 fall recruiting sign up guide it's out on our council website and it's got a lot of material for you to use in that guide so you've got a resource to go to but take a few notes on key points as we go along all right so let me uh, introduce our other two guys Chris Hogue is here. He's our Director of Membership Development and also the Assistant Director of Field Service for the Sam Houston Area Council. Chris is going to walk you through our fantastic lineup of fall recruiting resources. And I'm gonna pause a minute and let Chris say hi so he pops up on your screen. Hey everybody, thanks Debbie. I hope everybody's doing great out there in socially distant land. Uh, we're really, really excited to have you guys all here tonight. It looks like we're almost up to 300 participants and we have at least 100 awesome participants worth of cool stuff to share. So we're <laughs> excited that you guys are here. So thanks for having me. Awesome. All right. And then also with us tonight is Dustin Dupuy, our Director of Field Service in Shack. And Dustin is the man behind the chat room tonight. Dustin, say hi. Hey, Debbie. Um, tonight's, uh, I'm going to answer the very question that everyone has, and that is tonight's session will be recorded. We're actually recording. And we'll have it posted here in a a uh, couple of days onto our website. Um, the other housekeeping item that I want to let everybody know is if I'm slow to answer you in the chat, I'm either answering someone that messaged me privately or I'm aware of what's on the agenda and they're probably going to cover it. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time answering things that are going to be covered. So pay close attention to the topics and everything going on. And as always, we're going to record this and put it on the website. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Dustin. All right, so I'm gonna jump right in and talk about the approaches that we've looked at this summer. When Dustin, Chris, and I met in early June, 
to talk about what might we be facing in the fall. June looked very different. I mean, things were starting to open up throughout the state and the country. And so we came up with four scenarios of what different school districts, we have 16 counties that we serve, what that might look like for fall recruiting. So scenario one was schools are open for a recruiting event, schools are open to do um, on-site scout talks, hard copy flyers. I mean, really the scenario that we would have seen in prior years, everything's open and we're good to go. That was scenario one. Scenario two, the schools are open. They, they've decided to allow a recruiting event. They might charge something for extra COVID cleaning and stuff after we're done, but um, they, they are not gonna allow in-person um, flyers and, and, and things like that. They just don't want, want that involved with their, um, and scout talks, they're not gonna allow those as well, sorry. The, Cleaning lady just came in, totally threw me off. Uh, scenario three is no school access for a recruiting event, but some limited in-school promotions. So in other words, the school has said, we don't want anybody else in the building because we don't want anybody in after we've cleaned, after the kids have left, but we will let you do maybe a digital scout talk or an online flyer or something like that. And then scenario four, you know, we said, okay, let's go out there and just say, what if nothing? No, no school access for an event, and also no school access for any promotions, meaning the school district is just overwhelmed with COVID and the day-to-day -day changing of that situation, and they really have just asked all outside organizations, you know, please st just stay back for right now. We, we need to um, deal with our students and our teachers for right now, which we totally understand and support, and that's not a problem, but the reality as of late July and early August in this area is that we're pretty much in scenario four in most of our school districts and our council. So tonight for this training event, we are gonna focus on that scenario four. No school access for an in-person recruiting event or a parent orientation and potentially no access for even promotions. And we are gonna talk about joining scouting in a virtual environment. So wait, Debbie, what are you saying? Are you saying we're not gonna do sign up nights anymore? Well, I'm saying that in-person events, you muted yourself, Debbie. Okay, thank you. I didn't touch anything, so I'm not sure what happened, but Give me a thumbs up. Everybody hears me again. Okay. All right. So we're not saying that in-person sign-up nights will never happen again. Not at all. That's still a very successful and in-person way to welcome people to scouting. And we all want to get back to in-person as soon as we can. But for now, for the possibilities that we think we face in the next month or two, we are going to talk about virtually joining scouting. So we're going to make the assumption that we don't have in-person events this fall. And no matter what the three of us may call it tonight, whether we say digital or virtual or online recruiting, we all mean not in person, just so that doesn't confuse anybody because those words get used interchangeably. So let me just mention that. It's all still for the same goal. We wanna sign young people up for Cub Scouts and it's just a different approach. So I'm gonna stop and use Dustin's baseball analogy for a minute. Now my kids are grown and so that I can't give this as a first person story, but Dustin's two young ones are both playing baseball. And Dustin said, you know, actually many of you have told us in the past, we're behind the eight ball sometimes on getting people signed up for scouting because other organizations have beaten us to the punch. They've signed kids up already for baseball, soccer, football, band, whatever it may be, they got to it first. And that's often because they did online signups. So what Dustin shared with me is that to sign his kids up on baseball, all he needed was his phone. It was all online. He said that when you sign up, you just name, address, the age of the child, the parent's name, and an email address and a phone number. And you do not know the name of the team. You don't even know what team you're on. You don't know what the schedule is. You don't know what night you practice. You don't know when your games are. You do not know who the coach is because they haven't recruited the coach yet. And you don't know 
what else you have to buy besides the registration fee because you don't, that only comes with the team shirt and there's other stuff to get. There's a lot of things that you don't know yet. All you know is child wants to play baseball and you've signed up, you've made a commitment to play baseball. And that thought process is really, keep that in mind because that's really close to what we're talking about with Cub Scouts. I've come to sign up, I wanna sign up my child and I know you're gonna give me all the details in this virtual realm that we're in. I know I'm gonna get that information from you. So get ready because tonight we're gonna to introduce text to join in the Cub Scouts in Sam Houston Area Council. Woohoo! These unexpected circumstances this year give us the perfect opportunity to get digital. And in this masking up environment that we're in right now, we really feel like parents will expect us to do what we can do to use a safe approach to sign up for scouting. We feel like they're going to really appreciate that. Our goal as the membership team is to get families to join your pack online but every pack has got to be prepared to handle those online applications and new families and so that's a lot of what we're going to talk about tonight because knocking this out of the park or success in membership means getting prepared so we're the boy scouts of america right sam houston area council so let's get ready and do this well be prepared rings true to all of you i know that that just sounds like scouting right so there's three things let's see if i can see three things that Chris and I are both gonna reference in terms of getting ready for this to be successful. The first is be prepared. The second is marketing, and the third is communications. Be prepared, marketing, and communications. All right, so the first thing under be prepared is something you're doing right now. Our council is providing unit level training to all Cub Scout leaders tonight and a recorded version will be available on our recruiting site, on the council website, within a few days. So rather than you having to wait and our districts having to put on recruiting events, the council is doing that at this level so that you can get that information sooner. That's a first point and be prepared. Secondly, I wanna really encourage each one of you, whatever position you are in, whether it's inside the unit, cub master, committee chair, membership coordinator, um, the chartered organization representative, maybe you're a district level volunteer and you're here to support your units, great. Whatever that position is or whatever hats, plural, you may wear, I'm going to really encourage you to get familiar with the resources Chris is going to show you. Know and Use Your Resources was a, was a presentation title in the old Boy Scout Leader Wood Badge and I'm dating myself Anybody else out there that remembers that syllabus, um, you're my age. But it was one of my favorites to know and use your resources. We're always saying, if only I had, if only I knew, know and use your resources because we have a lot of them coming your way. The National BSA Marketing and Membership Team, and I'm gonna stop right here and give some big kudos to Michael Ramsey and Wendy Shaw and their teams at the National Office in Dallas. They have put together some fantastic webinars this summer because of COVID and they've been online in the late June they started. They've been on several weeks in July and there's two more coming. One's tomorrow night and one is in a couple of weeks. There's seven all together. Watch them. They last an hour each. Take time and watch them. You don't have to watch them all at one time. You know, you don't have to stream, you know, binge watch them, but you want to watch all of those. They are great resources for doing membership at any level. All right. And then <laughs> I have a quote here from Jeff Dunham. You know, we have the technology. We really do. So we're going to do this and do this well. So that's my high points on Be Prepared. Chris is going to have some more for you in just a minute. Marketing our opportunities to join. What do I mean by that? Well, creative ways, I mean, Cub Scout leaders are some of the most creative people I've ever seen. Yard signs, posters in local stores, Facebook posts, whether that's on your PAC's Facebook site or a website, or whether it's just person to person sharing, hey, we're welcoming new Cub Scouts to our PAC. Peer to peer recruiting, or friend to friend, you might wanna call it. You know what, our, our kids in Cub Scouts who are happy with what they're doing and having a great time, are the best little recruiters we have. Encourage each one of your existing youth to invite a friend to join the pack this fall. And then make sure and tell your parents and others about text to join. 
make signing up this fall a time sensitive thing. We don't want to leave it where it's just, oh, when you get around to it in the midst of your busy COVID life, sign up, you know, text to join Cub Scouts. No, plan a first meeting. And in many cases, that's really going to be your parent orientation, but that sounds a little scary. So we're just encouraging you to call that your PAC's first meeting for the fall. And it's probably going to have to be a Zoom meeting. But you can tell the parents when they text to join or when you're recruiting and talking to friends on the phone or wherever it might be, hey, new scouts get a rocket this fall and there's a joining patch. That'll be their very first Cub Scout patch. And we're planning a Zoom meeting for our very first meeting. And it's going to be September, pick a day here, fill in the blank, September 15th. And it's going to be short and simple and it's going to be information for the parents, but we're also going to have a fun activity for all your kids. And then when you have your meeting, keep it short and simple. Don't tell too much information. That's scary. It's overwhelming. Everybody's, you know, kind of zoomed to the limit right now. Tell them basic things about what you have planned for this fall. Assure them that you have fun activities planned that are going to be done in a Zoom environment or a social distancing environment. And then plan something for that the kids can be doing while the parents are listening. Many of you have told me over the summer, have told the membership team, that your packs have done some really fun scavenger hunts on Zoom. Well, what a great activity for the first meeting. The parents are listening to the fall activities and the way the pack works and how we're going to do this while we're on Zoom. And the kids, you send them out to find one of mom's white shoes, a wooden spoon from the kitchen, and, you know, I don't know, maybe the remote control for the TV, although maybe that's lost in the couch cushions. But, you know, pick something fun that's safe for the children to go find. And then stop every once in a while and have the kids say, okay, everybody hold up mom's white shoe and let the kids hold it up in front of the camera. And that engages the whole family in the Zoom meeting. That's a great first meeting because that's what you want to do in the fall anyway during this social distancing time. So be ready to market and make it fun for the family and point them towards that first meeting. And then on communication, the most important thing is to make every family feel welcome. And that's going to require getting in touch with them as soon as you see that online application come through. Or if you happen to get a paper application, great, but you've got to get in touch with them and say, welcome to our pack. We are so glad that you want to join. There's going to be a lot more information coming, but for today, just know we're glad you're here. And here's my name and I'm a contact for you inside our pack. If you have any questions, make sure that you're being a friend to those new family. Don't overload with too much information, but make sure they feel welcome. All right. That's just my opening comments on the three main points for tonight. Dustin, I want to stop for a minute and give you a chance to mention, we have any questions, anything you want to do before I turn it over to Chris? Um, in light of us having a virtual environment and, and kind of no sign up night, everybody kind of joining, what about recruiting adults? How do we recruit effectively recruit adults during, uh, without having kind of a sign up night? Uh, Chris, you may want to answer that. Well, thanks Dustin. I appreciate you starting me off with an easy one. That's, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a great question. It's a super relevant question. Uh, you know, I think we, if we look at this from a two to three prong approach here, uh, the first, and, and Debbie just talked about this, is that our communication with each of our new families is going to be so imperative. Um, having a welcome call, whether that's coming from the cup master, the committee chair, if your pack does or doesn't have a new member coordinator, if they do, fantastic. If they don't, might be a great time to recruit one. Having that person make a phone call and welcome them to the pack, but secondarily to that, introduce the concept of volunteerism, not a hard sell, but just say, hey, you know, this is a volunteer run organization. So we're always looking for uh, looking for folks. So just wanted to throw that out there, but we're really excited for you to come to our, uh, our first meeting. So just kind of planting the seed in that moment. And then that first meeting, that parent orientation meeting that we're not calling a parent orientation meeting, that is the first meeting. Uh, that's a great time to, to really drive that point home and close the deal with some folks. Maybe you've had a good communication back and forth uh, with somebody else during this time and or with another uh, new member during this time. Uh, and that person might be willing to, uh, to come on board. I think the, the point that, that we have to just try to remind ourselves is that this is just so different this year. And, and one of the things that makes it so different is that our families are spending a lot more time together 
than they would have in the past. And in a lot of instances, we've got uh, parents that are now turn, <laughs> being forced to turn into educators. And so that's a new experience for them. Uh, but the reality is, is that they're becoming more involved and parents are kind of being forced to become a little bit more involved uh, in some of the activities that their children are doing. And so we can use that, that kind of new normal as a springboard to help folks utilize uh, this activity as a scholastic support activity for one, but for two, just a great fun activity that they get to do with their family. So I think that's, hopefully that answered the question. Back, back to you, Debbie. Okay, well, if, if that's all the questions Dustin's got for right now, then Chris, really, I'm gonna turn it over to you because it's show and tell time, and I know they'd really like to see that. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, Debbie, I just wanna say thanks uh, so much to you. Another person I wanna say thanks to uh, on this call, I don't know if this person is on this call or not, but a uh, huge round of applause and thank you to Darlene uh, Scheffler. Darlene has been just absolutely amazing at helping us take these ideas from uh, you know, a conceptual idea to the reality of where we are. Um, I think that if we, the, the things that we're gonna introduce you guys tonight, if they're utilized in your pack well, and you take the time, like Debbie said, for the be prepared part of this, for the marketing part of this, for the communication part of this, that we really have the ability to kind of change the paradigm of how the BSA recruits. Um, I'm sure that you guys, uh, the people that are on this call right here, hear it all the time. You know, why do you guys still use paper applications? Why are you guys the only, the only thing my kid does where we still can't sign up online? Well, we do have an online sign up system. It's just, we've always been uh, a parent or a, a paper application organization. And so this kind of is a, is a push over the deep end that we may not have otherwise taken. So we can really look at it as, as a new opportunity. But this, the resources that we're introducing you tonight uh, or to you tonight are a big leap forward. So much so that I think that our council will pave the way for the entire organization. And so I'm really, really hopeful that you guys embrace this, that you're excited about it. Uh, it's gonna be fun to walk through all of these things, but I will warn you, I am taking you guys into a construction zone. All right, we are pretty close to being done with everything, but there are uh, pieces of this puzzle that are not quite complete. And we know some of those, if you stumble across one of them during this time, pass that information up to your district executive. We've got a lot of stuff we're gonna go through. Some of it's national resources, some of it's local resources. It's all a construction zone. So if everybody can just take out their hard hats and go ahead and put them on, uh, we're gonna go into the construction zone now and take a, take a good look at all of the uh, different resources that we have. So um, I'm gonna go ahead here. Let me just make sure I'm sharing screen. And all right, can everybody see this Google screen right here? Everybody's good with that? Yeah, okay, cool. All right. While we go through this, I'm going to talk to us about three different sections of, of this campaign, or the three elements of successful digital sign-up nights. And remember, Debbie talked about what these are. I've said it once. Be prepared. I think we've all heard that before somewhere. Marketing and communication. We're going to start in that be prepared section. And this is where a lot of the groundwork, we're going to front load a lot of that groundwork by utilizing these tools. One of the best tools to navigate any BSA resource is this tool right here, which is Google. I, oh, just a quick note. You guys are going to see me. I'm a, I'm a hand talker. You're going to see me pointing over here a lot. I'm using a second screen. And so the, the screen that I'm sharing with you guys is my second screen. So if I'm looking over here, that's just what I'm doing. Uh, that way I can still have a screen live to look at this Zoom call, but I also have a resource screen over here. So uh, this is a great place to start. If you've got a question about a document for the Boy Scouts or you're trying to find a document for the Boy Scouts, I highly encourage Google. It's a great place to start. Make sure that you're going to a legitimate scouting uh, address. If you are having trouble finding that, uh, scouting.org is one of those. You can also reach out to your district executive to make sure that you have uh, the right resources. But I want to start out with a really, really fantastic new digital resource. This resource itself has been out for a little while, but I don't know that it's gotten down to the unit level in the way that it should. So if you just go onto the, uh, you know, the, the table of contents 
over here that is Google. And you type in BSA membership, whoop, gotta learn how to type, membership and marketing hub. As you're kind of typing it in, even with my misspelling, it pops up. And it's the very first thing that comes up right here. This is a really cool uh, website that's gonna give you some uh, digital resources that you can utilize uh, to help your unit market themselves, as well as get more members involved. One of the things that I've seen a lot of uh, pop-ups on the chat, I know Dustin has been uh, referring to these back and forth on the chat. You guys have asked a number of times, Debbie mentioned these recruiting webinars that the national organization has been doing. They are fantastic, by the way. This is the location of those webinars. And it doesn't matter if you didn't sign up to watch them uh, in the past, you can actually go back and watch them now. There is a, a unit recruiting one right here that's actually taking place tomorrow night. You can register to go to it. Uh, how to use Family Fun, uh, Fun Fest to recruit, for example, 10 recruiting ideas in 10 minutes. Sounds like a kind of a cool one. Um, and then next, looks like a couple of weeks from now, uh, there's one, uh, it's not too late. You can register for those. You guys as volunteers, pack leaders, you can register to go check those out. But if you haven't already discovered these, these are the ones that have already happened. And if you see right here, these links are live. You can click on those and watch the previous webinars. They were all recorded. There is some great, great stuff on here. Everything from school access and peer-to-peer -peer recruiting. Uh, and, and the neat thing is you can kind of see the evolution of the discussion because when we started in this June 9th one, everybody was saying, okay, where do we go from here? And the discussion just continues to evolve as you go through. So it's kind of a fun thing to watch from start to, from start to finish. I'm going to come back to this one in a minute. But if you guys do one thing, and I'm going to repeat this uh, when I come back to talk about Be a Scout, but if you only do one thing, if you only watch one of these recruiting webinars, make sure it's this one right here. It says tech edition, beascout.org slash invitation manager. This is a great resource. It talks about all of the tech updates that have been done to beascout.org behind the scenes. And it's a lot of stuff that, you know, you may not have known uh, that they were changing. There wasn't a lot of publicity about some of these changes, but some of the functionalities changed. It's way smoother. This is where you find all that information out about it. All right. Um, so again, just right here, the membership and marketing hub. The cool thing is, is once you're in this scouting wire page, you can uh, click over to our next resource that I want to talk about, which is the BSA Brand Center. If the membership and marketing hub gives you uh, kind of ideas and resources. The BSA Brand Center is where you find the actual recruiting assets like flyers, posters, um, uh, images. If you guys wanted to create a point of purchase item, uh, if you want to put something, a video, for example, we're going to show a couple of videos tonight. All of that stuff is located right here. And so I'm just going to click on it. You're going to see it pull up and um, hopefully, there we go. All right. And all of the brand spanking new stuff that's launched over the last two weeks from the national organization is actually right here front and center. It's this fall 2020 recruitment assets for the BSA brand center. You'll see down here, there's scouts, BSA stuff, cubs, venturing, there's exploring, sea scouting. Um, there's a lot here. Uh, but for the purposes of this evening, we're just going to spend some time talking about the fall 2020 assets that are particular or specific rather to cub scout recruiting. So if you click on that, uh, it's going to bring up a number of a number of things. These Boys Life uh, mini mags, the Scout Me In mini mags, you can find some of those here. Uh, they didn't do a print copy of those this year, so I, I believe, I actually, this just came online about an hour or two ago or a couple of hours ago. I haven't even had a chance to click on those yet. I don't know if that's the actual magazine or not. We can look. Uh, why don't we do that? Let's see here. Let's see if it pops up. Do, do, do. It's taking a lot of load, so that must mean more. Yep, 40 pages, so that's pretty cool. So that's the actual mini magazine right there. Uh, you know, it looks like it's a vector file format, so you guys can have that. You can email it out to all your new scouts when they join. That's pretty neat. I didn't even know that that was 100% up to date yet. So the next uh, major, major thing that, that we're going to look at here on this page are these videos right here, and, and I'm going to be really honest with you. These are absolutely amazing. They do a great job in about three minutes and 45 seconds of helping parents understand what Cub Scouting is uh, by answering kind of the five key questions that basically every parent has. Yes, I'm going to play one of these for you in a little bit. So 
uh, if that, I don't know if that question is popping up on the chat, but yes, we are going to watch these, but I just wanted to drive you guys to them so you knew where to find them for yourselves. Secondarily to that, you're gonna see down here below, you're gonna see uh, Scout Talk uh, videos as well. There are multiple uh, of these. I will tell you they all have the same content, but the National Organization did a really good job of creating uh, different movies with different actors and actresses. You've got young men, young women, people of, of all races. So there's just a lot of inclusion here, which is great. Um, the content of what they say is all the same. And generally speaking, there's going to be two videos per actor, maybe one per actor. But for example, this young man right here, who is the one that you're going to see on our council landing page, he has two movies. One is a minute and a half long and one's a 30 second long. one. So you could find if you wanted to use this, for example, on your Facebook page, but you didn't want a minute and a half long movie, you could uh, take the 30 second one and uh, pop that on there as well. Uh, we chose to opt for as far as for the adult one that you're gonna see on the landing page, the video uh, for the adults, for really for the parents, is going to be uh, the male and female. We wanted to have both leaders represented, uh, and so this is the one we're gonna watch here shortly. Think of this, honestly, guys, I know Debbie said, right now we can't have in-person signups. This is going to be the sign up. This is going to be the answering of the questions. It's just done in three minutes and 41 seconds as opposed to 30 minutes. Um, and then these right here are like digital peer 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 to peer recruiting, scout aged youth encouraging each other to join scouting. Uh, this thing is awesome. So if you've got a great relationship with your principal and your principal is willing to send this uh, send this out through if you have a uh, like a morning announcements if you if you do have kids that are going back in person. Or maybe they, the principal would be willing to send out this video uh, through the online learning application that your school is using, and they'll, they'll send that out as a commercial. Uh, this thing is super, super great. We're going to watch it here shortly. So uh, again, I just wanted to touch on these. I'm not going to go into this stuff tonight, but there are Scouts BSA uh, videos down here as well, just so you guys know they're there. Uh, I know we're talking to Cub Scout leaders, but I just wanted you guys to know the, those were there. You guys are great ambassadors out there too, and you're gonna probably talk to some of your troops who are gonna say, this stuff is so cool. Remind them to go check it out as well, all right? So these are those two, uh, those two national websites that I really wanted to share with you guys, the Membership and Marketing Hub. I'm gonna go back to it so we can view it one more time. Right here, Explore Now, and that's where you find those webinars. And remember, once you get to this site, all you have to do is click on BSA Brand Center up at the top on the scroll bar right here, and you, just, you can just be navigated directly over to this fall 2020 recruiting assets. These are all downloadable. You can, uh, you can repost them if you want. They're just really, really awesome. So, all right. Um, what I'm gonna do now, I wanna go check out something else. Something you guys, I know, know a lot about already, and that's beascout.org, all right? So let's go ahead and check out beascout.org. It's gonna look mostly the same. I bet you guys are already really familiar with this. You probably saw on here the updates that happened last year with the Scouts BSA functionality that's been added. Um, but what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna pick a zip code that I'm relatively familiar with here. So let's say you're new to the area and you just moved in and you say, oh, well, I know that I, uh, I live in this zip code. Let's see what's out there. So the first thing that's gonna pop up is this list setting. It's gonna talk about the different organizations that have Cub Scouting, and it's gonna list them from a, a mileage from the epicenter or the center of that zip code. Um, I'm not a super list reader person. Uh, I am much more of a visual learner. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to get to that view here in just a second. But one thing that's really, really cool is we have a coming soon feature here for a brand new uh, Cub Scout packs that are in the launching process. And so if, for example, you have a parent and you guys are starting a Cub Scout pack at, I'm going to make this name up, Foster Elementary, uh, that will actually be on here as well. So uh, parents at a new school can inquire about scouting on this. And our team back here at the council will actually respond to them uh, and work with them to get something going. But the map view piece of this is pretty cool. Uh, if you just click on map view, this is where it's just going to populate all of the packs within a certain radius, you can increase or decrease that radius to 10 or 20 miles right here. Um, but this is just gonna show us 
everything within that 10 mile radius from the zip code that I utilize. So if I zoom in, for example, uh, you see here PAC 1774, the Woodlands Community Presbyterian Church. Um, this particular PAC has uh, request more information and show more information on it. So we'll click on show more information. They have uh, the contact information for their uh, unit leader, or maybe this is their, um, their new member coordinator. Doesn't specifically say that. Uh, so this might be somebody that was designated. And if you're the committee chair, the COR, or the cub master, and you're on this call tonight, know that you can actually designate somebody to be your new member coordinator who can actually handle all of this stuff for your PAC. Uh, and I would highly suggest, you're probably pretty busy as the, cub, as the committee chair or the cub master, I would highly suggest you guys recruit a new member coordinator specifically for your PAC and give them the functionality. We're gonna talk briefly here in a second about how to do that. Um, you can see their phone number. Looks like they have a website. This is an external website. Um, and it says here that they have dens for boys and girls. If you guys are probably all familiar, we call that family scouting. If it's got boy and girl dens, we call that family scouting. One thing it doesn't have though, and this is great that this example popped up, is it doesn't have their online application feature turned on. And that is a huge detriment to this pack. So pack 1774, if you're on here tonight, follow that link that I was talking about, watch that video on the Be a Scout webinar and turn your online application link on. It's going to make a huge, huge difference. So I'm going to show you what that looks like, though. Let's find another pack. Uh, that's 1774 still. Okay, here you go. 772, which is the Woodlands United Methodist Church. Here you can see that Greg, uh, looks like they have their meeting location information right there. Uh, that's Greg is the contact. Here's his email. Here's his phone number. They've got their external website. This one's listed only as a boy pack. So if you have that specific designation, you can have that there. Uh, I will tell you, I think we have two all-girl packs in the council. So that's it's generally speaking, it's boy pack or it's uh, a family pack and a majority of our Cub Scout packs, a large majority of our Cub Scout packs in Houston are family packs. Um, but you have this apply now feature, which is really, really easy and it's super, super uh, user friendly for them to use, which they can click on here. Um, now, I just navigated off of that before I was done with my point, I'm sorry. One thing to do is make sure that this contact information is up to date. There is nothing worse than reaching out to somebody that's not going to come back and talk to you or answer your questions. And if you haven't updated this information to make sure it's got the right person, whether it's the committee chair, the cub master, or that new member coordinator, please, please, please go in and do that. It's going to make a huge difference. So take some time after this uh, Zoom is over to Go to your Be a Scout pin, find yourself on the map, and make sure that contact information is up to date and correct. If it's not, there's a couple of resources that I'm gonna show you here in just a second that will uh, help you uh, make sure that you know how to do that. So we're just gonna click on the Apply Now feature for this particular unit. Um, it's going to take you to a specific URL uh, to, whoop, okay. Uh, a very specific URL, which is the homepage of my.scouting.org, which you guys are all really familiar with. Now, this is what our new users, our new parents who are interested are gonna see. They're gonna see that right here. If they go to be a scout, this is what they're gonna find. And so they're gonna have to create an account. Um, I have an account, so I'm just gonna use mine real quick. Um, and if we log on, if I'm a new parent and I create an account, it immediately takes me right here. So this is my youth sign up. I can sign up a, a, a youth member uh, here, or I can sign up myself to volunteer right here as well. So uh, this is a really, really useful piece. Uh, some of the other uh, resources that I'm gonna share with you guys here shortly are gonna link back to this. But if, I guess the major functionality piece of this that I have to remind everybody is if you don't have online applications turned on for adults and for youth, they're never gonna be able to join. So nobody wants to touch a paper application in one of these pens right now, right? This is one of those, those Boy Scouts of America pens that you always see at sign-up night. No one wants to touch those right now. People don't want to, they don't want to do in-person things where they're having to transact. Um, and this takes away a lot of the need for that. So you can just, you can just utilize all of that right here. Um, all right. So let's, I'm going to go back to that membership and marketing hub real quick. BSA membership and marketing hub. I love Google, there it is. 
the Be a Scout webinar that's right here that I said Tech Edition, this is where you'll learn how to update your new pin. So if you have a, the wrong contact information, the wrong person on there, go here and watch this video. I will tell you that this video is about an hour long and the first 20 minutes are a, a pretty cool um, pitch for lack of a better description for the uh, Family Fun Fest that's coming up on August 8th. And then I think there's one on September 14th. Is that right, Debbie, September 14th? So she's saying something here. Sorry, I muted myself so you wouldn't hear me moving around. I think it's September 12th. Okay, right? thank you. So, the first 20 minutes are an explanation of what that is. If you already know what that is and you're not interested in watching that, go right to minute 20. You're going to see the people that develop this software up at the national organization that are the product managers of the software and they're gonna walk you through how to update. This is not done behind the scenes anymore through any of the legacy tools. It's done completely through my.scouting and it's done through uh, a unit um, or what's called the organization manager. It's an easy, easy thing to do to toggle on the youth applications and the adult applications. It's literally just a toggle switch. So if, and, and as far as being able to designate somebody, you can do that in there as well. So do yourself a favor. If you're in a Cub Scout pack and you're on this call tonight, and if you're not in a Cub Scout pack and you're a unit commissioner or a district chair or somebody else that's on this call tonight, go watch this video. It is a fantastic resource. It'll be really, really helpful. The other place that you can uh, locate some help for Be a Scout is if you just Google there again, uh, the unit guide, BSA unit guidebook for online registration. Uh, that'll show you a 2018 version of the walkthrough of how to do some of this stuff. It's got some of the legacy pieces of it. So honestly, it helps, but it's not the most up-to-date piece. Go watch this. This is gonna change the way that you look at Be A Scout. It is awesome. It gives you everything. Um, and so it's really, really imperative that you go watch that. So. So if one more push on Be A Scout here, making it easy to apply online is gonna be key for everybody this year to have a successful digital recruiting campaign. So go check out that online registration um, uh, update here for Be A Scout and the Invitation Manager. Watch that video, make sure your Be A Scout pin is updated and make sure online applications are active for both youth and adults. So, Chris, can you go ahead and repeat um, who can change those pins and where they can ch edit the information on the pins and also um, where they do that, as, as well as I just will respond to kind of everybody out there that I see we get a lot in the chat, and that is that control that website. That website is actually owned by the national organization, so unfortunately we are unable to tack on and collect fees for the pack or collect medical forms or anything like that. We don't own that website. Um, but Chris is gonna show you here momentarily um, how we are going to be transparent. And that's one of the things I was answering in the chat was you can be transparent by editing the information on your BSL pen to include your pack fees uh, to let families know uh, beyond the national registration fee that there are other scouting fees that may apply. I would encourage you to also include what it covers. Like what are those, what does that fee, extra added additional fee cover uh, and what are they getting their value out of? Uh, but Chris, if you could let everybody know, repeat that, who can check? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And so some of the things that Dustin was talking about there, I'm gonna go over here shortly. Uh, but again, the unit key three can change that information. So that's the, the chartered org rep, the committee chair, the cub master for the unit. But again, you can designate somebody to, uh, to manage that stuff for you as well. Only uh, the key, I think only the committee chair and the charter org rep can make that designee happen in Be a Scout. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it operates. Uh, but again, watch this video, beascout.org, this tech edition. It will explain how to do all of that stuff. And it, you, you will actually physically make the changes through my.scouting.org, but they're gonna walk you through that. They're doing basically what I'm doing. They're going to do a step-by-step. -step. So, so spend some time, check that resource out, um, and yeah, it'll be a good one. So, all right. I can't see everybody's hands. Uh, I would ask everybody here if they're familiar with the idea of geofencing. Unfortunately, since I can't see your hands, I can't ask that. But 
Debbie's familiar. I can see Debbie right now. Debbie's familiar with geofencing. Dustin's familiar with geofencing. I can see him right now. He's, he is zoned in on that chat room right now. He's laser focused on that chat room. But I do want to share this with you guys because this is a really, really cool tool. Um, what geofencing, what it basically is, is it's an online marketing tool that uses cell-based proximity uh, to advertise directly to a particular constituency group or a market group. Um, it's, it's usually done through apps like Facebook or Twitter. Uh, geofencing effectively places an invisible fence kind of around a geographic location. And then when somebody from that constituency group or that market group enters within that fence, uh, whatever the radius may be, whether it's a half mile, mile, five miles, uh, whenever somebody goes into that fence, it, bam, it hits them with a message and says, hey, check out this site. And it does it all through their social media platform. So what's really cool this year, the national organization has agreed to pay for a geofence for two weeks for each of our Cub Scout packs. And we've gone a step further. We're helping you guys making, we want to make sure uh, that you guys are successful. So we've, we've done a lot of work behind the scenes with the national organization to make sure that it's going to work with a lot of the features that we have that other councils don't. Um, and so in order to see this, I'm going to take you guys to a new website. This one is a, is a deep construction zone. I apologize in advance. Uh, this website is less than, gosh, I don't know, like it's maybe eight days old. So it's, uh, it's in its infancy. We're still trying to polish it all up here. But if you just go to uh, samhoustonbsa.org forward slash uh, geofence. And what I'll tell you is you're going to see me type out samhoustonbsa.org within our office. I don't know why, but we got to type all that out. You at home, you can actually just go to shack.org, uh, shack.org forward slash geofence. But if we click that right here, welcome to this new page. The first thing you're going to notice right here is a gentleman by the name of Michael Ramsey. Michael is the National Director of Marketing for the Boy Scouts of America, and this video is super, super helpful because it explains what a geofence is, and it explains how you as a pack leader can actually do a geofence on your own. Maybe the geofence that we're providing for you is a little bit too generic. That's okay. For five or six bucks a month, you actually can run a geofence in your community through Facebook, through Twitter, that has specific stuff for your pack. Maybe, for example, the first week of September, you want to run a geofence that says, sign up at our text to join link. And guess what? We're having our first meeting on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, September 7th. I just made that date up. I don't know if that's actually a Tuesday. But if you can want that specific marketing material in there, you can put that in there. It's really, really cool. And it's cheap. So you can watch this video and you can actually see how to do that. Right here, you're going to see a button that says submit join night event details. What I will tell you is, like I said, this is a construction zone. This will not say this for long because we're not having join nights in the traditional sense. Like Dustin said and Debbie, or Debbie said earlier, we're not having traditional join nights. So this will just say something to the effect of submit geofence details. Your geofence is automatically going to be set up around the school that, uh, that you serve. And so what you can do, though, and I'll show you here, you'll click this, you'll select your district. So we'll just pretend that we're in the Skyline District. That's not a district anymore, actually. So that needs to be updated. We'll say we're in the Mustang District. And we'll say that we're pack, uh, trying to think of a Mustang pack here. Uh, is it 1014, 1041? Maybe the Mustang pack. We're going to pretend that's a Mustang pack if it's not. I think it is. Uh, and we're doing online uh, virtual recruiting. And we want our geofence set up. So we're going to say continue. This piece is going to come out because we're not having Zoom sign-up nights. So you actually won't see this probably within the next two days. This piece will go away. And you'll have this right here. You can list so your contact information. Hi, my name's Chris. Here's my email. Here's my phone number. And if I want to have a preferred ad, these are just two static pictures. Or you can select a um, cool thing about geofences through Facebook. You can actually select one of these banners, which is just like a running banner. Um, so that will actually be the link that shoots through to them. It'll be either one of these pictures with your information, uh, maybe a little blurb about coming and joining and checking us out, and, uh, and that little video right there. And you, you, can prefer, you can pick your preferred ad picture right there. We are automatically going to set your geofence up around your school. So you don't have to worry about coming up with an address. 
And what I'll tell you about the time frame of this, the national organization is gonna pay for each Cub Scout pack for two weeks. And it's going to be the latter half of August. We're trying to finalize the dates for the national organization to launch it, but probably the last week of August, first week of September timeframe is where we're really looking at for this particular tool. Um, you'll go on here a little bit further up. Oh, I have to make up, a, we'll, we'll use Zoom, right? I, I have to make one up right now. This is, again, this is coming off of here. So, um, you know, we're gonna use that. Uh, we want option A, we're gonna click continue. This will automatically. We have a lot of questions in the chat regarding multiple schools. Uh, multiple, okay. multiple schools. Uh, I'm, it's quite a few of them. Okay. If you do serve more than one school, you have the opportunity to submit a second additional geofence right here, uh, which is, like I said, that's you can actually see it right here. If, if I want, for example, an additional geofence for a second address, you can uh, continue and click yes. Um, we're only doing two. The national organization is only going to do two of these for each Cub Scout pack. If you have other schools that, that you want to geofence, again, I talked about how packs can actually utilize this tool themselves. Uh, go back and watch Michael's video, and you can see how you can do that for yourself. Uh, this is just, I'm trying to illustrate the national, what national is paying for, and how it's going to collaborate with our, our next feature that I'm going to introduce. But I know that this is kind of a foreign concept. A lot of people don't use this as a marketing uh, tool, but it is a fantastic marketing tool. Again, it's just really exciting and, and I, I really feel grateful for the national organization that they've agreed to pay for one of these for every single one of our packs. And we're committed to your success here at the local council. So we want to make sure that we can get your information in and get it online. Just so, a second. So I, I'm going to ask that if you have a question that you go ahead and put that question in through the chat. Um, that And Dustin, if uh, Dustin will prompt me if we need to stop something. Uh, so please make sure that you're submitting the questions through the chat so we can uh, keep moving with the program. Dustin, did you have one more? Or did, I, did I get that pretty well? We're good. Thumbs up. Um, other concerns with um, if they're church-based, are you going to put a geofence around the church? Or what about scenarios where you may have a church, uh, a pack at a church, and then across the school? They're concerned that they don't meet at the school necessarily. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, what I'll tell you for church base right now, this is what this is right now is specifically for our schools. We're going to geofence around the schools with most of, in most instances, a one mile radius uh, in some of our communities where we're really, really dense. Like for example, in my house, I've got three elementary schools uh, within my area uh, within one mile of my house. So we'll probably shrink the geofences down for that. If you have some specific requests, Work through your district executive. I'm not saying no. All I'm saying is this is a somewhat limited resource. You have the opportunity to create those geofences yourself as well. And so I just wanted you guys to know that uh, where you can find the how-to, that's back at that uh, check.org. I'm going to remember you're going to see me type out Sam Houston BSA forward slash geofence. And if you go back here uh, and you look here, again, this video will help explain how to do that on your own as well. So Chris, let me jump in for just a second. There's also a geofence video out on the National um, Membership Marketing Hub. One of the weekly webinars a couple of weeks ago was on geofencing and Michael taught that as well along with a couple other people at the national office. So if you've never used it before, I, I see a lot of questions in the chat which just like don't really understand how this works. Yeah you to watch those videos maybe 30 minutes on geofencing it gives some examples they 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 show what it looks like on your phone they do a lot of that kind of stuff that it takes another 30 minutes or so to do and we don't have time to go to that depth in this session but the videos are very good and I really encourage you to watch those and we're still gonna be here for questions your DE is going to be there for questions so um, soak up be, uh, some more of that information because it's they've really done a good job this summer of putting training videos if you will together so that we have those online resources at our fingertips all right well i want to be respectful of everybody's time here too so we're at 754 uh we still have a little ways to go here so i want to make sure that we continue to get through this information but right now is the, we're going to move on to something which is actually really really exciting so if everybody can take out their cell phone all right and uh, you'll see here, got my phone, 
And when you have your phone up, show me on the screen, you got your phone. Uh, I want you to go to your messaging app. I don't know whether you got iPhone or Android, so I don't know what to tell you. I know on, on uh, iPhone, it's called messages. And I want you to open up a new message, okay? And I want you to type the number 31996. That is who you're sending this to, okay? So 31996. And then you're gonna type in the, in the body of the text message, type the word Cub Scout. So I'm gonna do it with you guys. So 31996, that's who I'm sending it to. And I'm gonna type Cub Scout, all right? Go ahead and hit send and see what happens. So if you've gotten a text back, go ahead and show us on the screen here. It should look something like that. Whoop, there we go. He's got your Scout Me In logo. Debbie, did you get one? There we go. I see some folks shining through. So guys, this is, it, this is a really, really cool feature uh, this year that we've got. I'll tell you that we tried to simplify this for everybody that we have, whether a new parent says, Cub Space Scout or Cub Scouts all squished together or does it, or do they do the plural? We've got all those words. So no matter what variation that they do, if they text that to 31996, it sends them that message with the link that's associated uh, to take them to our landing page, which is our new join page. I'm gonna show you guys that right here um, because it is available on our website as well, but the link that you receive will drive them to this page. So. Again, samhoustonbsa.org, here forward slash join. And this is also where we're gonna watch these videos that I talked to you about briefly uh, a few, few minutes back. So, do, do, do. All right. So. Hello everyone. I'm gonna I'm stop this real quick. One of the coolest things, if you're a brand new parent and you text Cub Scout to 31996 and you click on that link, you're gonna come up to this page right here, which is shack.org forward slash join. And one thing that's really, really, really cool about this page is this feature right here is an autoplay feature. So it's immediately engaging, it immediately grabs them. You can see this is that five questions talk for parents. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna watch this video right now. Zabretta. And I'm Orlando. Welcome to everything you wanna know about Cub Scouts. Okay, maybe that title needs some work. But if you are watching this video, chances are you have some questions about Cub Scouts. That's right. And today we're gonna to talk all about Cub Scouts and answer some common questions parents like you have. So let's get started. Question one, what is Cub Scouts? I'm glad you asked. Cub Scouts is filled with fun adventures and making friends. That is what your child sees in Cub Scouting. For you as a parent, Cub Scouting aims to build citizenship, character, personal fitness, and prepares them to be future leaders in our communities. The magic of Cub Scouting is that it is a game with a purpose. Cub Scouts and their families participate in fun activities that are designed to achieve these aims. What may seem like a simple activity may in fact be a method used to teaching your child about science or the environment. All of these things make Cub Scouting fun for the family while making awesome memories that will last a lifetime. Question two, who is Cub Scouts for? Cub Scouting is for boys and girls in the kindergarten through fifth grade. You and your child will be welcomed into a small group of other families who have children in the same grade to form what is called a den. Your den will be the focus of activities, get togethers and celebrations. All the different grades in the community form what is called a pack. Now question three, what about meetings and activities? Depending on where you live, each den and pack schedule will be slightly different. Generally, dens tend to meet twice a month, where your scout will make new friends, play purposeful games, and learn new things. Then all the dens in the pack come together usually once a month for larger pack activities and events. Cub Scouts participate in tons of different activities, including games, projects, skits, songs, outdoor activities, trips, and service projects. Besides being fun, these activities offer opportunities for growth, achievement, and family involvement. Question four is about adventures. Once you join Cub Scouting, your child will start on a journey of fun adventures. In fact, adventures is what we call the different activities your child will do. Adventures in Cub Scouting are grade specific with content designed to be age appropriate. Adventures range from cooking, science, and of course, the outdoors. Many Cub Scout families also enjoy camping, but don't worry, you don't have to be a survivalist. Remember those small groups of other family members from the same grade level called dens? Well, each grade level is working towards earning a special patch. 
This patch is called a rank, and each grade level has a different rank they work toward. Kindergartners work towards earning the lion rank, first graders towards the tiger rank, second graders work towards wolf, third graders work towards bear, fourth graders work towards weevilos, and we know that's a funny word, and lastly, fifth graders work towards arrow of light. Yeah, and to earn their rank, your child will simply complete adventures with their den. And no worries if you miss a meeting, because as a parent, you can do most anything that might have been done in a den at home. Okay, our last question is about cost. How much does it cost to be a Cub Scout? Like most youth activities, there are initial startup costs you can expect. This includes a registration fee, one-time joining fee, pack dues, along with the Cub Scout uniform, and your child's handbook. Now, we know you might have some more questions, so to discover more about Cub Scouting, go to scouting.org slash programs slash Cub dash Scouts. There you will learn more about the program and see the resources to get you started. All right, guys, so I don't know about you. That video is awesome. It's high energy. The actors are super crystal clear. They're engaging. This is precisely what we needed to make sure that we come out with a professional, high quality looking and engaging product that are going to make people excited to join our organization. Um, we're already on the landing page, so they don't need to go anywhere else. Before I go further onto the landing page, though, I almost forgot this last time somebody had to remind me. I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna play the, uh, the scout talk, the young man that's right here as well. Uh, so you guys can see that this thing is so cool. My name is Carlos and I'm a Cub Scout. I'm here to talk to you today about becoming a scout like me. Who here knows what Cub Scouts do? Well, since this is a video, I'm just going to tell you what they do and let's see if you're right. Cub Scouts get badges for doing fun activities and we make friends. Scouts go camping, climbing and fishing and swimming together. We have fun. We play sports and go to parades. Scouts also help people and become the best versions of themselves. Scouts can become future leaders. In fact, some Scouts have even made history. Did you know that some of our former presidents, astronauts, award-winning scientists, and actors were Scouts when they were your age? Here's an example of something Cub Scouts get to do each year. Wait for it. We use our skills to make rockets, and then we fly them. So, who wants to become a Scout? Okay, this is still a video, so I'm gonna need you to let me know a different way. If you want to join, click the link below. You'll be able to find a pack near you, get any questions answered, and sign up for Cub Scouts Online. Make sure you have an adult to help you with that part though. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I hope to see you again soon as a Cub Scout like me. So, you know, peer-to-peer -peer recruiting at its finest right there. I mean, it's just so, so cool. It's again, so engaging, upbeat, energetic, uh, and it shows rockets. Right? We're doing rockets this year. We've got rockets on house ready to launch. I'm going to show you guys those here in a second. But uh, so it, it's theme specific. And he says for us, he actually prompts the kids and the families for us. He says, click the link below. And that's what's really cool. So I want you to notice something real fast. We do have a, a, a membership hotline here at the council, and this is the phone number for it. We want to make sure that if families are struggling, for example, uh, let's say somebody is struggling to find a unit in their area, they have a direct contact information. Uh, our direct contact that they can reach out to right there and we can help direct them to a pack that's immediately in their area. But if you go here, you're only two clicks away from joining. So you've already landed here from our text to join. It drove you to our landing page. And now, okay, my kiddo is in Clear Creek ISD. I'm gonna use this one because I was working on it earlier today. So uh, I can go here, Clear Creek ISD, and it will refresh the page. You'll see it drop down. Paul Zabretta and Orlando again, but boom. I'm now in every single school that's in Clear Creek ISD and the Cub Scout pack that serves it. It tells them whether or not they're a family pack, where their meeting location is, when their pack meeting is. And here's the really cool thing. They have a join button feature right here. They don't even need to go through Be a Scout. If my, if my daughter goes to Armand Bayou Elementary, I can join that pack right now. It'll go right to that um, my.scouting online signup page that I showed you guys before. That's where this link takes them to. So they can literally land on our page after, tech, after doing the text to join, land on our page and click the join feature and be signed up in a matter of minutes. A neat thing, and we haven't put this in here yet, we're going to, 
This will change every month. This is that national fee, which is the monthly prorated fee plus the join fee for all new scouts. But a neat thing this year, and, and Dustin was talking about the transparency for, uh, part of this earlier, is make sure that folks know what your fee includes. So for example, this pack charges $85 a year. It includes the national registration fee, it includes advancements, and it includes a camp. Uh, this one, 75 a year, it includes advancements, it includes a pack t-shirt, a derby car, and a camp out. So we can see what the different packs have as a fee, and we can see what that fact, or what those, uh, what that includes, what that pack fee includes. Uh, I think that's a really, really important part of this, so our families know what they're getting for their money. Um, but it's really cool that we've got here, uh, we've got it all right here for our families. If they want more information, they can click on this I right here, and that takes them to the Be a Scout URL that's specific for them. Um, so for example, PAC 1965, if I click that, it would take me to their Be a Scout URL. But I think, and I have a feeling, and Debbie was talking about this before, our families, by the time they've hit here and they've watched our videos and they've seen what scouting's all about, they can just go ahead and join. If you're on baseball, this is what you do. You go to the site, you join, and then you get engaged. So guys, all of this was all about that be prepared section that I mentioned to you guys right at the beginning. Remember, we've got three elements for successful digital sign-up nights. And all of that is be prepared. This right here, please help us make sure that these are all up to date. Your district executive has been reaching out to you. If you haven't talked to them yet, or if you have some clarification points that you need to make for your pack dues, make sure that you reach back out to your district executive and provide that clarification. We'll get it updated, and that way you've got full transparency on what your pack dues include. So guys, now it's time to get the word out. You know about the text to join, which drives everything to this landing page. So it's time to get the word out, all right? So you can do that in a couple of different ways, but one of the biggest things that you can do is see if that principal will send home the link for this right here, right? Can they send it up? or a digital flyer that has the text to join on it. Some districts use peach jar. If your district is one of those, get with your district executive. Um, can help, they can help you get that put together quickly. Uh, we have an amazing resource this year. I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull off share screen real quick. Um, our yard signs, which are the same as last year. It's that Scout Me In logo. So you guys should be pretty familiar with this. Everybody can see it. We'll check out what it says. Rather than saying in that little thing where it says, Sign up, 7 p.m., Cafe, Jones Elementary, side door, call Bill, knock three times, you know, trying to squeeze all that stuff in there. It just says, text Cub Scouts to 31996. That's it. It's super easy. It's super clean. There are 5,000 of these bad boys that are going to hit the Houston market. Your district executives already have them in their hand. And guess what's even cooler? Because it's all the same. If your Cub Scout pack advertises text, text Cub Scout to 31996 and somebody that lives in your neighborhood works in Katy and all of those folks down in Katy have the same message, we're now advertising all across the council to get people to our landing page. We've literally created a grassroots simplified branding and marketing effort that goes across the entire council. So what we did for this, we know last year, Folks got five of these. They were pretty excited to get five because the year before we did four. This year we gave you 10. We doubled the amount each pack is going to get. We know it might be harder to get flyers into the school. So we gave you 10 yard signs per Cub Scout pack. Put text to join on there. Text Cub Scout to 31996. Help everybody advertise for everybody else. Another cool resource. I kind of messed this one up, uh, but it's, the posters, the big posters, this is a lot bigger than it looks. I'm kind of holding it. Uh, I'm actually like my head's in front of it, so I'm holding it back. But it's got space down there. Text Cub Scout to 31996. Every pack gets 10 of these. It shows a scout shooting off a rocket. It's everything that we're going to be doing. It's tons of fun. Uh, and every pack is going to get 10 of these as well. So, guys, we're driving everybody to this landing page, having a cohesive uh, branding plan a simplified way to join and you guys can help by getting that out there. Can you put it on your, um, if you guys have a, a next door, for example, in your neighborhood, put it on there. Uh, put it on your Twitter page, put it on your Facebook page for your Cub Scout pack or your personal one. Blast social, your, all of your social media pages with the text to join. 
And you can even just put, if it's a website or a link, an active link that you can do, put shack.org forward slash join. Get those great images that I showed you from the BSA Branding Marketing Center on there as well. Um, last resource I wanna show you before I go to the final little piece there though, everybody was wondering, can we see, we've got rockets, patches are in. I know Debbie's smiling, rockets and patches are here. If you recruit Cub Scouts today, we've got patches and rockets for Cub Scouts too. Day every scout that signs up this fall is going to get a is get a rocket and a and a patch. So uh, the same as last year, we've got a whole bunch of new rockets that come in. Uh, we've got a, some sprinkles of the old rockets from uh, previous years that are in there as well. They all use the same engine, so they'll be able to be launched at the sign up. Um, we are. I just saw something pop up on the chat. What's the deadline to sign up and receive a rocket? That's a great question. Um, drive signups, guys. Start out and say, sign up by September 15th and you'll get a rocket. After September 15th, if we have rockets left, fantastic. We can still advertise for that. But for the time being, when you guys are advertising on your social media pages, sign up by September 15th, I'd say at the latest. But drive some incentive for people, uh, create some incentive by making it time sensitive. So, all right. So Great. now we've talked about Membership, we've talked about marketing. The last piece of the puzzle here is communication. Chris, before we move on to that, could yep. you a couple of questions related to the landing page? Sure. A lot of messages in the chat in which I was not able to answer and keep up with. I figured this would be better just vocally. Um, concerns with private schools, um, concerns with uh, church-based units uh, not being listed, concerns with um, corrections needed to be made on the site. Where do I send the corrections? Why isn't my pack listed? What if we serve more than one school? I know that's a lot of questions thrown at you. I'll try and keep up for you. But start with the private schools. Can you show them where that list may be seen on that landing page? Absolutely. So if you look here, there's actually a, a link um, right here for private schools. It's, it's every private school that we've gotten information for. Um, so if you click on that, um, it'll take you to all that. I don't, I don't want to dive too, too deep into there, but that's where you're going to find the private schools. If you click on that link and your school's not there, or if you see something, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody just said they didn't see my page shared. Hold on. Right, sharing any longer. Sorry about that. Also, um, along with, if you along scroll with down private, here. Along with private schools, also home schools is also a question as well. Yeah, so one of the things is this is not designed to replace Be a Scout. So Be a Scout is still a great functional tool for our homeschool units, our church-based our church -based units. What this is right here is for a majority of the folks that join, um, they join through get, receiving something from their school and they associate themselves with their school. And so that's really what this is for. If we have packs that serve multiple schools, that's on here, uh, providing that, uh, that's, that information has been provided to us. If you see corrections that need to be made, work through your district executive. Uh, there are about 350 of you guys out there with Cub Scout packs and there's three people updating this website. So if you see those, work through your DE so they can funnel them back up to us. So I hope that answers some of those questions. Again, I'm trying to be a little bit quick because I know we're kind of running over on time here and I want to be respectful of people's time. But just to recap really fast, we've talked about be prepared. We've talked about the marketing resources and how to effectively market. Now let's talk about the communication aspect of things, all right? It is so important that we understand that this whole effort of recruiting will be a total waste of time if you guys, the packs out in the field, don't quickly follow up with the families that sign up online. And, and we have to have a point to have a welcome meeting, that first meeting that Debbie talked about, uh, and it needs to be quick. I'm not saying that you need to have it, you know, if you had somebody join today, and you've got to have a welcome meeting for two weeks from now for them. And then you've got to have another one down the road. When you launch your campaign and you're utilizing text to join, be prepared to have a welcome meeting and be prepared to most importantly, contact the people that sign up within a day or two and say, Hey, we're getting ourselves, uh, we're getting our welcome meeting ready. Our first meeting is going to be in a couple of weeks. I'm going to, just start with a phone. I just wanted to start with a phone call to you. Just be uh, be a friend. Let me know that or let you know that uh, you've got a resource here at the pack level. Uh, 
I should have a, an email out to you with our Zoom link within the next week uh, that's going to tell you when that first meeting is going to be. And so you can send a, a follow-up email to them afterwards as well that has that information. And I would say the third point is don't be a stranger. Call them back. Make sure that you, uh, you know, a couple days before that, that parent orientation meeting, uh, make sure that you call them back and invite them. Guys, great deals are made and lost in follow-up. That's true in business. That's true in scouting. One of the biggest reasons that, that we lose people is they didn't feel like they were welcomed into the organization, the, the Cub Scout pack that they joined. Make them feel welcome by communicating with them early and communicating often. So digital recruiting in a nutshell, I'm gonna go over this really quickly again. Be prepared. How do you do that? Make sure you know how to use Be a Scout and the online registration tool. Watch that how-to video if you need help or reach out to your DE. Make sure your pin is updated. Submit your information for that geofence. Uh, pick up your recruiting supplies from your district executive. If you haven't already heard from them how to pick up your supplies, you will hear from them shortly. Uh, they have the supplies in their hands. Make sure you pick up those supplies. Like I said, 10 yard signs, 10, uh, 10 um, posters per unit. Make sure that your information is accurate on that join page, shack.org forward slash join. Go on there and take a look for yourself. Make sure that it's accurate. If it's not, communicate through your district executive so we can get it changed for you. So that's be prepared. Marketing, put that text, uh, Cub Scout to 31996, put it everywhere. Do grassroots marketing on social media. Use a geofence, yard signs, posters. Don't underestimate the idea of word of mouth. People value the opinions of people they know. Brag about scouting. There's a lot to brag about right now. This program is amazing. It showed that it's resilience, uh, that, it's, that it has resilience. It showed that it can still be fun in a digital environment. And kids need that right now. They need this program right now. So use some word of, word of mouth uh, advertising as well. It's okay to brag about scouts. Last piece, some school advertising. Don't be afraid to go up to your principal and say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Principal, I was wondering if you could put shack.org forward slash join or text Cub Scout to 31996 on the school marquee. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Don't assume that the, that the principal is gonna, sell, is gonna tell you no. Work with your DE if you don't know your principal that well help get them in, uh, they can help you get into the school. Follow up quickly, follow up often, have a parents meeting and have fun. That's the communicate piece of this. So how does the workflow of this work? I'm gonna share this with you guys just cause I think it's a really easy graphic to visualize. So give me one quick sec, sorry. This is good Chris, cause I was fixing to remind you to pull up the sign up night guide. I'm going to, yeah, absolutely. And tell so, everybody where it is. How does it all work? See the, our, our new members see the advertisement. Oh, can you We're guys not see this? Seeing it. Okay, there you go. So how does it all work? New members see the advertisement, they text, they hit the landing page, they find their school district and school, they sign up, they hear from you, now they're having a blast. All right, it's that easy for people to join. So I highly, highly encourage you guys, take the time to get used to these tools, become familiar with these tools. Before I go on to the sign up night, uh, or I'm sorry, the sign up guide, Debbie, there's one thing I wanna show real fast. And that is at the top of the join page, you're gonna see a button for Espanol. And this is brand spanking new. We are still, construction hats on, we are still finishing this up. If you click on that, of course, it can't be reached because it's shack.org. Uh, so bsa.org forward slash, and I'm gonna say this wrong, but I think it's pronounced unirse, which is uh, Spanish for to join. Um, if you go there, this is the Spanish language version of the uh, English. Hello, everyone. This is a Scout Talk video that's actually in Spanish. We just got this from the national organization today. This video right here, they just got finished filming yesterday, and the national organization is in the process of editing that video. As soon as we get it, it will go live here as well. But this whole page is the Spanish language piece of this. So. Really, really cool resource. We've never had this before. I'm excited about it because we do have families that English is a second language. We want to welcome them to scouting as well. Uh, so that's right there. And you can just flip, you can toggle back and forth. Drat, shack.org. Again, that's not going to not work for you guys. It's just inside this, literally inside our office. For whatever reason, that doesn't work. So, uh, so we actually have to type out samhoustonbsa.org. So, that's the English side of that as well. 
So Debbie had mentioned the sign-up night guide. A lot of you guys are really familiar with this guide right here. Um, I'm going to zoom out just real fast so you can see it. So maybe you'll uh, remember what it looks like. But a lot of you guys are familiar with this, especially if you were around within the last two or so years. Uh, we've really put a lot of energy and uh, information into this. So this particular guide has, a, has great resources. And on page two, it's been updated for this year. This is the 2020 guide. It has all of these resources that we've just talked about last night with live links. So that people were asking about the membership and marketing hub, how do they get there? Well, you just click the link. How do I find those, uh, uh, those, ref those videos? Well, you just click the link, it's right there. Um, be a scout, where do I find that guidebook? Click the link. The webinar for Be a Scout, where do I find that? Click the link, it's all right there. So I'm gonna show you guys where to find all of this stuff. Literally everything I just went through is right here. It's really easy to locate on our council website. So if you go to, again, you guys can do shack.org, but for us, we're gonna just use that. And we use recruiting, forward slash recruiting, hit enter, and you're gonna see it right here. A lot of you guys probably went to this page uh, to sign up for this, right? you may have clicked this register button to sign up for this training tonight. Right above that is this is the 2020 sign up night guide. And it's the complete resource that I just showed you. Um, and it's right there. You can download it. It's PDF. Uh, check it out. If we go past the digital recruiting part of this, we have the 2020 resources that have been edited for in-person recruiting. As Debbie started out with this, we may get to a place October, November, December, who knows, where we can start doing some in-person recruiting. Fantastic, let's get out there and do that. And this is where you can see those resources for how to do that. There's a timeline in there for that. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I think you guys know about this. Just draw your attention to a couple of quick pieces. How to, for example, do a parent orientate, or I'm sorry, a, um, a sign up night using a presentation method. The agenda to do that is right here. It's quick, it's easy to use. Uh, the Table rotation method is right here. Again, quick, easy to use. And really, really important because you guys will be conducting one of these. Remember, we're not calling it a parent orientation meeting. We're calling it that first meeting. Uh, this, this format can be easily adapted for a digital meeting, uh, but you have a sample parent orientation meeting right here. It's quick, it's easy to grab, it's right there. So guys, uh, make sure you go and download that guide it's, it's a fantastic guide and it's really easy to use. We tried to make it, make it resource rich and resource interactive so you didn't have to remember. Remember, Debbie said at the beginning, don't worry about writing everything down. We didn't want you guys to have to do that so that the resource is right there. Um, Debbie, I'm gonna tell you this, I'm about to lose my voice. I can hear <laughs> it. So, <laughs> so I just wanna, I wanna close my part of this by just saying guys, get familiar with all these resources. There are some fantastic, fantastic things on here for you guys. We're excited to share them with you. We're excited for you to use them. Um, it is a construction zone, so, so just please be patient with us while we make those changes. Uh, and if you have a fantastic idea for marketing or recruiting, make sure you share that. You can go and share that information on our, on our uh, Facebook page um, and share it with other unit leaders. We just really appreciate everything that you guys are going to do to impact all of the lives of kiddos this year. Debbie, that's my part. If we've got some questions, I might, I might have like two questions worth of voice left. So I'm sure Dustin has a whole bunch of questions queued up. I might have two questions worth of, worth of voice left. So, all right. All right. So, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, ask a few questions, Chris. Yeah. So uh, now my chat's moving on me. So forget <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of chatter and a lot of questions around what about if we uh, are church, why aren't the churches listed? Um, we, have a, we have several hundred churches. I would say um, it, at least 70%, Chris, would you say, are uh, of PACs or chartered by faith-based organizations. Correct. But schools where all, you know, most kids go, 99% of the schools go outside of a, for public schools, outside of homeschooling or private school, in which we did some boxes for homeschool and private school um, they go to a public school that they associate with and so when you're when you're looking at your churches your packs those churches should be assigned an elementary school so within within the geographic area of that charter organization of that church um, if you are a pack in which 
uh, say you are the uh, uh, St. James Church and we only serve the youth at St. James, we're not associated with the school, chances are St. James may have a private school in which you draw youth from or simply you just you, you, uh, you recruit from St. James uh, youth, the, the attendees of the, uh, the church itself. So typically you are advertising to them about your pack and they're not getting a whole lot of other advertisement. Um, listing a couple hundred, several hundred actually, uh, churches on the landing page could present itself to be very difficult. There are many First United Methodist churches. You're breaking it down by address. It would be very difficult to navigate we found it easiest to associate with school di uh, school districts and school campuses. Um, there was one other question, Chris, that I was going to uh, ask you about, and it flipped off my screen, so I don't. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, someone was asking if the, if we were having plans to put on um, the tag uh, text Cub Scout to three one nine nine six on one of those social media uh, clips, those 30 second clips, did were we working on something that we could share with people so they could share that on their uh, Facebook page? Great question. We are, we're really trying to get that from the national organization in an editable form and we haven't gotten it yet. Um, it, it, it's probably gonna take a little bit of time, honestly, before they give us the raw footage to be able to, uh, to edit and, and it's, it's not as simple as you might think to just add text to a video because a lot of it's, you know, coded and protected. We're trying, but to answer the question, the short answer is yes, we're working on that. We hope to have that soon. That would be a resource that would be uh, on our, our chat.org forward slash recruiting page as well uh, for people to download. I, I would also like to make a comment. You know, there's, there is some uh, chat about uh, be a scout with our new text to join feature. Um, yeah came up with the text to join feature and, and, and looking at the implementation of it. It's never designed to actually take the place of Be a Scout. Be a Scout in its own um, setting has its own flaws. And part of that is when you type in the zip code, it's based on charter organization. And so if I am a parent of, uh, of a, a youth that goes to a certain elementary school, I have no idea when I pull that up which pack is associated with the elementary school my kid goes to. And if my specific church that I attend don't have a Cub Scout pack, I, I don't know which one to, to, to go to. So this is, it's supposed to complement Be a Scout, not take the place of it. So we still have a full-time uh, customer service, Elia, uh, on our recruitment hotline that uh, is dedicated to Be a Scout and online registration. And this will also help drive that, but we are not replacing Be a Scout. We're still going to use that full in full force as well. So I wanted to make that statement as well. All right. I know we've got a lot of other questions on here and we might not be able to answer all of them, guys. We're already at 830. There are so many good questions, a lot of great content going on here. This is an exciting discussion. It's a new discussion that we're having. Remember, like I said, it is a construction zone, so it's a continuous quality improvement process. We really appreciate you guys all being here. Dustin looks like he's got one more question. I got one more great question, Chris. All right, go for it, go for it. And that is, can we go ahead and start promoting the text to join feature? I would caution just because you just said it's a construction zone, at what point can, can they feel free to do that? Are they, are they just making sure that their stuff is accurate before they start doing it? Or do we need to wait until everyone's is accurate? No, you can go ahead and make sure your stuff is accurate. If everybody does that, then we're good. Uh, but I will tell you this, the text to join is live. You can use it right now. The online apply, the landing page, all that stuff works, it's live. This resource is, is active. So you can go ahead and start promoting that if you like. Um, if Chris, you, when, are the, when are the national prorated fees? Is that tomorrow those are gonna get put in? Yes. Okay. Because yes. I, I saw a chat go flying by. I don't have it all displayed. Yeah, but. unfortunately, we just, that's the same for every unit. We just hadn't have, uh, we didn't put that one in tonight. But yes, it'll be in there. And then that'll be updated once a month as the prorated fee. Correct. I, another great get. question. Another great question. All right, question. Dustin, last question from you, sir. And yeah, then we, you know, I, I think it's another <laughs> great question that okay. we have in the audience. And we, we need, people were asking about 
should the PAC fee, the, PAC, the additional PAC fee, include the national registration fee? They noticed that some may and some may not. I tried to answer in the chat, the 2020 national, prorated national registration fee will be collected with the join now button. The, you will, the, the, uh, the scout, the parent will pay that with their registration. The additional PAC fee next to it allows them to understand the transparency and the reality of what additional costs are there associated with this pack. Much like baseball has additional costs with uh, purchasing your, your uniform pants and socks and, and, and everything else, uh, so does Cub Scouting, Cub Scouting, but it varies by pack. So that's why we want the transparency next to it. Now, some packs have worked into that amount their 2021 recharter fee. And so some people were noticing that that's not in every pack. I would speculate that possibly through fundraising, the pack covers their, uh, their rechartering fees. I don't know every specific situation in which people were looking at, but there was concern and, and question whether or not the, the national registration fee should be included in the pack program fee. And so what I would say is not the 2020 fee, because that's gonna be collected with the join button, but if your PAC intends on collecting for the recharter and that's part of your PAC dues, I would say that you would want to include that in your PAC, uh, additional PAC dues. I would just also caution you guys in light of obviously the, the, the world that we're all living in right now, um, if the, the more that we're able to work with parents on possibly paying that out, maybe paying half now and half after the beginning of the year, um, making sure that it's enough to pay for recharter. Um, but I would caution to just kind of work with those parents if you're including that fee as well. Um, but it's, you would want to include that if you're going to recharter, if, you're, if the uh, parent isn't expected to pay the rechartering fee. All right, great questions. Awesome, awesome discussion. I appreciate everybody asking these questions because I know they're on everybody's mind. Debbie, we are for real kicking it back to you. <laughs> Uh, and hey, thank I'm, you so much. I'm fixing to put my senior patrol leader hat on here, Chris, because we we are come on, we're we're almost done. So I'm going to shut close or shorten my closing by way a lot. Um, there are some really good questions that we weren't able to get to, so I'm going to encourage you to get with your DE it within your district and and pour those questions out. If those need to get channeled back to us, the DE will do that, and then. We may need to put out, you know, an email to all of you or something. That's the cool thing about registering for tonight's meeting. We have, have an email so we can get back to you guys if we need to with some, you know, updates on answers to your questions. So I'm, I, I can feel the excitement. Thanks for the little chat notes that say this is cool. The videos are awesome. They are. The, the text to join feature is going to be really neat. Um, we can do this. And if anybody can do this well, it's the Sam Houston Area Council volunteers. You've done a fantastic job and I'm gonna compliment all of you right now that have been doing digital programming all summer long with your kids. You've done, I've heard so many fun ideas and I've seen your pictures out on Facebook of the stuff you've been doing, even in this crazy weird environment we've been in. And it's just a natural thing for us to go digital with recruiting as well. And you're gonna do a great job with it. So keep in touch with us in terms of questions, other ideas that you may have. Um, I saw a question, I think, from Mel about what about rockets and when are they going to launch? Okay, that's a program thing. So I'm going to tell you, talk to your program folks within the district, and they're going to say, we don't know yet. And that's because nobody knows, whatever, we're, whatever. We are prepared to get flexible with that as well. It may be, it may be a day where the tigers come from 10 to 11 and the, you know, the, the, the bears come at a certain time or whatever, just to spread people out. And it may be that a really large pack has to do it on two days. It may be that, you know, I don't know, be flexible, but work with your program team on how that's going to work. Our job is going to make, going to be that when those online signups come in and there's like a printout when they join online, the DEs will get that many rockets and that many patches and they'll arrange to get them out to the cub master or the committee chair. So we're going to make sure the rockets get to you as unit leaders. Um, okay, so my Cub Master Minute's gotten kind of short. I got a quote today from a dear scouting friend of mine named John Richard. And I don't know if any of you know John. He loves to post a, a positive message every morning. And this was this morning's message. And I just thought, this is awesome. 
One reason people resist change is because they focus on what they have to give up instead of what they have to gain. And that's from Rick Godwin. And I thought, isn't that the truth? In this group of people, you guys as unit leaders are always on the positive train. You're always on what are we going to do to make this work? We can make scouting happen for youth in spite of a worldwide pandemic. And I think the Sam Houston Area Council can step out and show everybody how it's done. So I wanna thank all of you for what you do at the unit level. You're where scouting happens. I wanna thank Dustin and Chris. Those are my guys and we couldn't make membership happen in this council without them. Darlene, thank you if you're on here. And for all of you that help at the unit district level, blessings to you may god watch over each and every one of you keep you well all your scouts well and let's do scouting together i love you i miss you i'm ready to throw chocolate at every one of you and i hope to see you again soon so goodbye from the council office for tonight fine thank you <laughs> hi cat <laughs> bye thank you good night everyone Thank you much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Learned a Thank lot. Thank you guys. Great job. Thank you. Bye. Bye everybody. Hey Bill. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Bye bye. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Muchas gracias y buenas noches. <laughs> Good night, Roll. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>